Hey guys, this is Malinki. Welcome back to my channel, Boys of Malinki. Today we will talk about life cycle of Obelia. And if you are new in my channel, please subscribe my channel. And if you like my video, please do like, comment, and share my video. So in our last lecture, we have talked about the structure of Obelia colony. Uh, and we have seen that three types of uh, zooids or morphological forms are there in each Obelia colony. Those are the polyp and uh, polyp and then it is the uh, this one polyp and then gonangia and then medusae right so today we will see the life cycle of obelia so the medusae are actually uh, sexual reproductive zooids and they poses gonads and we have seen these are uh, imaginary medusae so they will emerge from the uh, obelia colony and they can move they can swim in the water and they are the actually sexual reproductive zooids and they poses gonads so here we have the medusae this is the male and this is the female medusae okay now they are dioecious testes and ovaries are born by separate individuals that means male and female structures are uh, different male and female bodies are different and uh, germ cells are generated in gonads. When the gonads are ripe, they get ruptured and the germ cells are shed in water. So, these uh, medusae, they have different separate gonads. Male have uh, male gonads, female have female gonads. And uh, the gonads will actually form the germ cells, gametes. That means pumps and eggs. And when the gonads get uh, ruptured, these germ cells are coming out in the water. Okay, so this is the ova. You can see this is released from the female medusae and this is the sperm that is released from the male medusae. The ova are large rounded cells just like this. And the sperms are very minute. They are actively swimming flagellated cells. You can see this is the flagellite has and it can swim actively. The medusae die soon after liberating the gametes. So, after uh, releasing the gametes, these male and female medusae, they will die. And fertilization takes place in open seawater, that is the external fertilization. And in the seawater, zygote gets formed. Okay. Now, zygote formed after fertilization immediately undergoes cleavage. And the cleavage is holoblastic and the blastula is formed. So, from the zygote, uh, the blastula is formed. So, the zygote uh, cleaves and uh, two cell stages there and then two cell stage will be four cell stage and then the blastula will be formed. And this is the holoblastic cleavage. The blastula is cover, uh, converted into a planula larva. So, planula larva will be formed from this blastula. Okay. Then what happens? The planula swims freely for a brief period and settles down on the substratum by one end. So, this planula larva, it will uh, swim for some time and then it will settle down in the uh, surface. Okay. Now, the proximal end gradually narrows down and the disc appears for attachment. So you can see that this is the proximal end and this is getting narrowed down. And uh, this narrow part will form the disc-like structure just like this and it will help to attach with the substrate. Okay. But the distal end expands and by developing a circlet of tentacles, it turns to a hydrula larva. So, uh, the distal end means this is the distal end. It will be expanded and tentacles will form just like this. And this is now called hydrula larva. So, now planula becomes hydrula. The hydrula is converted into a complex obelia colony. So, from this hydrula larva, this obelia colony will be formed. And we know that the colony has three zooids. Polyp is there. Gonangia is there. And in the gonangia, medici barbs will form. 
and these medusa birds will uh, be coming out from this gonangia and they will become uh, male and female medusa and the cycle will be repeating so this is all about today's lecture i hope you liked the lecture thank you for watching my video